This video is brought to you by The Grudge. Own it on digital March 10th and Blu-ray March 24th. Hey, you know that movie you're scared of? <laughs> well, it just got a whole lot creepier. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hidden secrets in horror movies that will terrify you. Hello, Amanda. You don't know me, but I know you. That means we're looking at the small, blink and you'll miss them details from horror films that will help add to their terrifying plot and that you probably missed on first viewing. So get ready to hide behind a cushion and check behind the sofa. Oh, and spoiler alert. All right, let's get to the list. Number 10, Pazuzu's Face, The Exorcist. Still widely regarded as the scariest horror film of all time, The Exorcist is not short on agonizingly terrifying moments, most of which come courtesy of Linda Blair's Reagan but it's the demon Pazuzu who's acting through Reagan that we want to focus on. The pale-faced spirit Pazuzu, or Captain Howdy as it's playfully referred to, is a lingering presence throughout the movie, both psychologically and in several scenes visually. Is there someone inside you? Sometimes. Who is it? I don't know. Is it Captain Howdy? At various different points, the wide-eyed, yellow-toothed demon flashes up on screen, reminding us of its dominance and control over Reagan. Also, quick shout-out to the flashing image of Father Karras' mother before he jumps out the window. Number 9. Demonic Spelling Bee, Evil Dead Yeah? Director Fede Alvarez has made a name for himself as a boundary-pushing horror director with the two modern horror classics in Evil Dead and Don't Breathe. Keep an eye out for the streaks on the walls of the blind man's house for some neat attention to detail in Don't Breathe, but for this entry, we'll be focusing on the remake of Evil Dead that features a demonic Easter egg baked right into the names of the film's characters. She even called me David for a whole day once, and I played along, because... Mia, look, I wanted to be there. Okay, I did. David, Eric, Mia, Olivia, and Natalie make up the film's core cast of characters. While these might seem like regular old names, rearrange them in this order and the first letter of each name spells out demon. Spooked yet? She didn't mean to hurt her. The thing I killed was not Olivia. Number 8. Language Barrier – The Thing this John Carpenter classic kicks things off right in the thick of it. A Norwegian helicopter is in hot pursuit of something incredibly dangerous. And that something dangerous is a dog, or so it would seem. In a classic example of a language barrier, the Norwegian pilot catches up with the dog at an American research station and wildly explains that it's not a dog. But it's in fact, quote, a thing imitating a dog. The Americans, however, and most viewers, don't speak Norwegian. So the spiel is merely viewed as the rantings of a madman. Just think about how many lives they could have saved if they'd only paid more attention in language class. Number 7. Reverse Bear Trap – Saw Deciphering the intricate, twisting plot of the Saw franchise is like trying to paint underwater. It is hard work. Hello, Mark, Paul, Amanda, Zep, Adam, Dr. Gordon. I want to play a game. The creators play their cards extremely close to their chests and leave us with the sense that anyone could be a bad guy. Little did many of us know, however, the series' key antagonist Jigsaw, also known as John Kramer, was revealed to us early on in the first movie. Remember that flashback that shows Lawrence Gordon with a patient in the hospital? The patient had... His name is John. Dr. Gordon. He's a very interesting person. Well, it's John. And what's on his notepad right in front of him? Sketches for the iconic reverse bear trap mechanism. If only the doctors had been a bit nosier, they might have caught him. Hashtag doctor patient not so confidentiality. I woke up. All I could taste was blood. Number six, the mural, It. Hi, Georgie. What a nice boat. Do you want it back? Being a shape shifting monster whose one purpose is to dish out nightmare fuel, It or Pennywise has an extensive list of creative scares up its sleeve. 
Although there are several terrifying Easter eggs lingering in the background of the movie, like that creepy librarian, we've gone for a much subtler one for today's list. The shot of Pennywise stalking the Losers Club in the background of a wall mural. At the start of the scene, Pennywise isn't there, but later on as the camera cuts back, the clown's painted face can be seen behind Ben, showing us that it really is watching us everywhere we go. Because I know what I'm doing and I don't want you doing the British guy with Shut me right now. Shut the wound! Get in there! Number five, cult members, hereditary. This movie is one of the most original horrors of recent times, focusing on a family that's seemingly being followed by an evil spirit of some kind. You're uh, scary! No, I am not! Peter, Peter, listen! <coughs> Stop it! <coughs> There is no need to be scared. This is your sister. <laughs> the big scares are few and far between, but when somebody's not being possessed, the filmmakers keep us on our toes with tons of little details. Like the shot where the horrifying ending is alluded to when we see a congregation of cult members surrounding the Graham family's house when the scene cuts from day to night. The naked cultists can be seen scattered around as if keeping watch on the family and planning their next move. You want to check out your window, don't you? It's okay, we'll wait. Number four, Dancing Boy, Insidious. This 2010 movie reminded us just how much we love jump scares and just how scary Darth Maul could be. Anyway, in a house littered with ghosts and spirits, you've gotta be on your toes at all times. And in fact, one of the creepiest moments of this movie defies its jump scare MO by being a small, easily missable background detail. Just before Renee spots a dancing ghost boy through a window, the same boy can be seen moments earlier, standing facing the wall as she does the laundry. The camera just about pans to reveal the boy, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> Number three, Valak, The Conjuring 2. up similar paranormal spooks to Insidious, the second installment of the Conjuring franchise is jam-packed with glancing background scares. But our pick for today's list is the genius way the filmmakers alert us to the name of the freaky entity, Valak, early on in the movie. I had this crazy dream. I saw this thing. When I woke up, I couldn't get out of my head, so well, maybe this might help. There are a number of different scenes in which Valak's name is spelled out right before our eyes including on a window ledge, on a bookshelf, and even on a lettered bracelet. It's not what you'd call traditionally scary, but when you understand the importance of identifying Valak, this foreshadowing is spine-tingling. Mom, who's that? Number two, a nice Chianti, The Silence of the Lambs. Senator Martin. Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Ah yes, the mother of all horror-based detective movies. The Silence of the Lambs is all about tension and the constant battle of wits between the imprisoned Dr. Hannibal Lecter and the FBI's Clarice Starling. Later on in the movie, Lecter escapes his imprisonment, and little did Clarice know, Lecter was hinting to her that he hadn't been taking his medication, which in turn aided his escape. The hint comes in the form of the movie's most legendary line. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. In a nutshell, due to blood pressure reasons, the medication Lecter will have been on, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, make it dangerous to eat certain types of foods, including liver, fava beans, and red wine. Geez, Clarice, take a hint. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. You know, in doing some sleuthing for this list, we found a bonus hidden secret for you brought to you by today's sponsor, 2020's The Grudge. Keep an eye out for the address, 44 Rayburn Drive, where the character Fiona Landers lives. Car 646, we need an ambulance to 44 Rayburn Drive. 44 is a significant number in The Grudge franchise, most prominently featured in the original Japanese short known as 10 Fours. Nah. Superstitions in Japan consider the number four to be an unlucky number, so Fiona's house must be bad news. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Faces, Midsommar. 
As horror movies go, this has got to be one of the hardest hitting and most graphic. The movie focuses on a group of devoted cult followers, and what starts as a holiday getaway soon spirals into a strange sacrificial nightmare. A big part of the movie is the protagonist Danny's guilt over her sister's suicide, and director Ari Aster ensures the presence of this is constantly in her and our minds throughout, albeit subtly. You are our May Queen. Faces can be seen in the background of several scenes, including the cliff jump scene and, most notably, the scene where Danny is carried to dinner. Mom? Here, we can clearly see the face of Danny's late sister among the trees. That's it. That is enough internet for today. As Horga takes, so Horga also gives. Thus, for every new blood sacrificed, we will dedicate one of our own. Doesn't this list just make you want to go back and watch all these movies again with a fine tooth comb? So, did any of these surprise you or did you know about them all already? Either way, let us know in the comments, or come talk to me on my YouTube channel, or on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton. This video is brought to you by The Grudge. Own it on digital March 10th and Blu-ray March 24th.